so I'm going to speak about the uh, common clock framework and uh, especially how to, to use it. Um, I'm Gregory Clement. I'm working uh, at Embedded Linux Engineer at Felix Run since uh, 2010. And uh, mostly I work on uh, embedded Linux development and also uh, giving training uh, about uh, embedded Linux. Um, I'm contributing to the kernel support for the Armada uh, 370 and uh, Armada XP. Uh, are, they are socks from uh, Marvel. Uh, so I'm also a commenter of the MVUBU sub architecture. So MVUBU are socks from the Marvel embedded business unit. And uh, I'm living uh, in France near Lyon. Um, so first, we are going to see uh, what the common clock framework is, a uh, global view of it. Then we are going to see the implementation, but we are not going to go in the deep level of the implementation, more the overview of uh, how it works. And because this, um, the purpose of this uh, talk is really to to show you how to use it. So the, the main part will be how to uh, add your own clocks and uh, how to deal with uh, the device trees. And the last part will be more uh, how you, you use this clock with device tree, but um, with device driver, but this part uh, didn't change since uh, many years. Uh, so um, a quick reminder about what are the, the clocks. Uh, most of the electronic chip I drive on by clocks, and uh, this uh, the clock of the peripheral of, of a socks or even of a or board are uh, organized uh, in a tree. And uh, so controller controlling uh, this clock is useful for two main reasons: for power management because. Uh, the clock frequency is a parameter of the dynamic power consumption, and the other reason is to get a time, a time reference, for example, compare, uh, to a, a computer board rate or something like that. Then the clock framework uh, has been available for many years. When I do some research, it's, it came um, from the prehistory of Git, so it's pretty old now. Uh, it offers a simple uh, API, uh, clock get, clock enable, uh, and so on. And uh, that is used by the device driver. And we are going to see in the very last part how you use it, because this part didn't change. And uh, so it's nice, but it had uh, several drawbacks and limitations. Uh, each machine uh, class uh, had uh, its own implementation. So that means the, it didn't allow code sharing, and also uh, it didn't work uh, for our multi-platform uh, kernel. That's why uh, uh, comes the common clock framework. Uh, it started in uh, 2010 uh, by Jeremy, Jeremy Kerr, who uh, introduced uh, first a, a common struct clock, and then uh, it handed in uh, last year, at the beginning of last year, uh, by the common clock framework uh, itself, uh, submitted by uh, Mike Turquet, which is uh, the current maintainer uh, of this uh, subsystem. Uh, so it implements the uh, clock framework API. Uh, it also uh, gives you some basic clock uh, driver and made possible to uh, implement your own uh, custom clock driver. Uh, it allows also to declare this clock uh, and their data associated in a device tree. Uh, it's more that the preferred way is now the mandatory way if you want to add a new clock. But uh, there are still some um, socks uh, which still use uh, the, the initialization statically in the code, uh, but they are being uh, converted to in the new way. Uh, it also provides a debugfs representation of the clock tree, so it's useful during the bring up or to see uh, everything is okay. And uh, it is implemented in the driver's clock, where uh, it used to be uh, specific for each platform. Now everything uh, is moving in, in this um, directory. So it is an overview uh, of the driver overview of the clock framework. So the clock framework itself. Uh, it is used by the device driver, and so it's called 
uh, the the IPI uh, that it was there from uh, years now. Uh, it uh, get from the device tree uh, the clocks, the relationship, and also it, the, the, there you have the relation between the clock and the device driver. And uh, it will be you you will be able to download it from the website if you want the driver. Uh, and then uh, you have the uh, clock uh, driver itself. So you have some clocks uh, which are uh, provided by uh, the framework itself, and then you can add your own clock on it. So we are, we are going to see each part specifically. Um, first, the interface of the common clock framework. Uh, so there is a common definition uh, of a street clock. Um, and the uh, common implementation is declared in uh, clock.h. Um, and each time a driver uh, will use the, the operation, it will uh, use the uh, clock operation. It's when you are going to add your own driver, it is this truth that you are going to uh, fill. Um, so it is the, the core framework and the hardware specific part is there you register your own operation and uh, it's um, the idea is you have to write in, uh, uh, this for each new hardware clock but more for each new uh, type of hardware clock we will see that as we have a basic clock type and you will see a common pattern so you can just reuse existing basic clock for your new clock. Um, these two halves are tied um, by the structure uh, clock hardware uh, and this one is defined in your old struct you are supposed to uh, declare and point to the global uh, struct clock. So um, we are go going to have an overview of the clock framework uh, itself um, it takes care of uh, maintaining, uh, maintaining uh, the clock tree. Uh, it takes care of the concurrency prevention uh, using uh, global spin lock for the clock enable, disable. It takes care of the propagation of the operation uh, through the clock tree because uh, remember that we have a, a tree of, uh, of clock. So if you want to change the rate of the parent, then the rate is propagated to the uh, children of this clock uh, and so on uh, and uh, there was also some notification uh, which can occur for a given clock um, so the um, it's used the, the strict clock so you have a, a view of it where you have the name the operation this one is the address specific part and all this one is more related to uh, how to describe uh, the tree uh, of, the, of the clock. Um, the implementation itself is uh, exposed in, uh, to the driver in two files, uh, clock.c and clockdev.c, and uh, you have uh, most of uh, all the classical um, function that we see uh, at the beginning, uh, prepare, get, uh, enable, and so on. Um, but we are going to see just later. Uh, and of course, we have also the uh, managed version, the DevM, and also all the relate, uh, related function to um, device tree. For example, if you want to just uh, look for a specific clock, knowing his name in the device tree, you have uh, some function for it. Then the core of, the, of this presentation, of this talk, is about how to write your own uh, clock, driver clock. Um, they relies on uh, uh, the dot .ops and dot uh, address pointer. So uh, 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 the ops is for the operation uh, or the callback you feel and this one is about the data uh, relative to uh, your clocks. Uh, it's uh, abstract some details 
from the stroke clock. And you don't have to implement all the observation. You the only a few are really uh, mandatory and it depends of the, uh, of the clock you, you have. Um, and this uh, clock is created uh, once it's registered using a clock register. So here's the list of all uh, the operation. Uh, so we see more or less the same operation which are exposed to the driver and what happens when you, from your driver, you, you call a clock, uh, for example, clock enable, at the end it will call the uh, hardware part of the clock enable you have just uh, registered. Uh, so, and we are going to see uh, each of them. Um, as I said, you don't have to uh, register all the operation, so depending of uh, what kind of clock you, you have, you have some uh, operation which is mandatory, so for uh, a gate clock uh, you need to exposed to uh, the enable, disable, and the is enable uh, function. Uh, for uh, a clock that uh, when you can change this, this rate, then you need the recalc rate and the set rate, and one of the two, and we are going to see exactly what they do. Uh, if you have a, a clock with a, just a single parent, so you don't, uh, you, this function are not valid, uh, but if you uh, implement a multiplexer, then you will need to implement them. And if you, of course, if you uh, implement the root uh, clock, you don't have to set them. And of course, uh, you can have some clock which can uh, change the rate, uh, gate table, and also multiplexer. So you can have all uh, this function uh, depending of uh, what your clock is capable of, of doing. So first, um, first part about, is about how to making the clock available, and there is um, this IPI, IPI is uh, uh, split in two parts: um, the prepare and prepare, and the enable disable. So a prepare is to prepare the, the clock before actually using it. Uh, the reason is when um, when you want to set up a clock, for example, a clock which is uh, accessed over IC or something like that, you have to set up something and it can take some time. And in this uh, function, you, uh, uh, you can uh, sleep, you may sleep. And uh, of course, as you may sleep, uh, you, this function may, uh, must not be called in atomic uh, context. And then you have the enable itself, so this one is just the small part will, uh, which actually engage the clock uh, once it has been prepared. Uh, and this can be uh, uh, called directly from uh, atomic context, so that means you can't sleep in this uh, function. And uh, so what's happened? You, depending of what your hardware can do, you can just uh, implement one or another. And uh, maybe you have noticed earlier. Uh, not uh, here. Prepare and prepare. No, uh, I didn't write it. But there, there is now function which is called um, uh, prepare enable, which is a function which called the two of them. So in the case you don't have to be very quick, you just want to prepare and be able to use your clock, then uh, this uh, high level uh, IPI will call uh, both of this function. Um, we have also is enable, which is a, an, uh, also an API which is part of it. And this one, uh, uh, instead of checking the enable count, because uh, usually if you want to check that a uh, clock is enabled, it's just a matter of, of uh, a counter. Uh, but uh, here is when you want, you have to create, uh, creating the hardware. Um, else, for example, uh, during the boot of your system, uh, maybe this clock have been enabled by the bootloader. So 
at this point your kernel is not aware of it. So by using this function you, have, you are going to check exactly the uh, real state of your hardware and not of uh, the, um, the framework. Uh, then you have um, a function related to uh, managing the rates. So run rate uh, will um, return the closest rate uh, which actually supported uh, by the clock. Um, then you have determinate rate. Uh, this one uh, do the same thing, but uh, as it's, qu it's quite new, it's also uh, allow you to select the parents to get the closest rate. In the, in the case, you have a clock with two parents, and depending of the parent of your clock, you can uh, get uh, closer uh, to the to the rate you want. So that's a, a, a new um, API to have a better handle of uh, what of the of managing the rate. Uh, set rate change the rate itself because what you have usually at the high level, you just want you just tell that you want this rate, and then uh, what the framework do, it will first uh, uh, call these two functions to find which is the closest rate what, uh, from the ask rate from the high level part and at the end it will uh, call uh, set rate. So it's in these functions that you actually uh, change uh, your rate and um, recalculate uh, rate um, in this, this, with this function, you uh, use your hardware to really um, uh, recalculate the rate uh, of, of your clock. Now you have a um, function which are used by a multiplexer, so it's a, a, a clock uh, from which you can select one clock or another on the tree. Uh, so get parent will uh, this time uh, read from the hardware which is the parent clock of your current clock um, and because uh, it's only used when the clock are statically initialized at the beginning of the framework and then uh, when uh, the, um, a device a driver call clock get parent it won't uh, read the hardware, it's just uh, uh, get the information from the clock framework. Uh, and set parent, uh, change the input source uh, of this clock. Uh, and there are some new callback uh, recently added. Uh, so they are less used, but uh, they have been added for specific uh, uh, needs. Uh, so is prepared is to as the um, same kind of function that is enabled, so, but this time you just want to see if the uh, function was prepared, but at the hardware level. And depending of what you have done on your function, on some uh, driver you can re uh, clock driver you can replace your is enabled by is prepared, um, disable unused. Um, this one is um, what the clock framework do uh, when you have declared all the clock of your system. At the end of the initialization of the clock framework, it will scan all the clock to see if, if this clock are used or not by a, a driver. And if the clock is not used, uh, unless you have uh, set a specific flag, it, uh, this clock will be disabled by default. Um, but sometimes um, you, you want to disable uh, a function but without uh, using uh, the global disable function because uh, you don't want to change the counter or something like, like that. So uh, for this you have the disable unused uh, function which is the disable function which is called only when uh, the framework uh, wants to disable your, your, your uh, clock because it is unused. So it's a function which is mainly uh, only called during the initialization of the clock framework. And you have the same kind of uh, function 
with the prepare uh, uh, clock. Uh, so that was all uh, the basic operation you can implement, but uh, most of the time you can just rely on uh, the five uh, base clocks. So you have the fixed rate clocks. The, it's uh, uh, a clock with always running and always provide uh, the same rate. So for example, just a, an oscillator uh, which is uh, plugged uh, somewhere. So uh, you can't get it, you can't change the rate. It's a, uh, a constant uh, clock. Then you have the gate clock. So uh, it's uh, a clock which have, which have the same rate of this parent. And uh, you can only get this clock, get or unget this clock. Uh, but this clock by itself I don't have uh, a, a rate. Uh, and if you want to expose a clock uh, which have a rate and can be get and get, we will see that we have to uh, compose it. Uh, uh, you have to compose the, the first uh, base clock. You have the mux clock. So this one uh, allows to select uh, the parent. Uh, and uh, it's just uh, about mixing, so you can't get it, you can't change the rate. You have the fixed factor clock. Uh, this one um, will always uh, divide and multiply uh, the rate from the parent clock, and you can't get it uh, neither. And uh, you have the um, divider uh, clock, uh, which uh, can be selected about uh, a different uh, clock. So uh, that means that most of the clock, usually you, you can just use this simple best clock and it will uh, handle most of the case. Um, in reality, you, most of the time you have clock which can do uh, gate and mixing on gate and have a rate. So that's why for this, on this case, you can use uh, the uh, clock composite, uh, which is another kind of base clock. And the purpose of this clock is just to be able to uh, merge uh, this base clock and uh, craft your own clock uh, about them without having to uh, write your own uh, function because uh, before, the, before this um, composition, uh, what you uh, what people do, they are just copy and paste a uh, function from the base clock, and that's all. So with this, we, we avoid the duplication of the code, which was one of the purpose of the common clock framework. Um, so currently, you can uh, use uh, three uh, base clocks, MUX, rate, and gate. And for each clock, um, you provide an handle and the operation set, and you fill them. And then you register the composite clock. Um, so you don't have to fill all, uh, all struct. Uh, for example, if you just want uh, a clock which can, uh, you can. Um, uh, rate and gate, uh, then you can just write null, null here, and that's all. Um, here, uh, an example. Uh, current in the uh, current kernel uh, for the 3.12, uh, 3 .12, there is uh, only one uh, clock you, which uses it is the, in the whole winner clock. Uh, so, uh, what I am uh, remove some part uh, to fit in this in one slide, but uh, of course there is some test and so on, but I uh, just remove this. Uh, so you declare all. Uh, so here, uh, what, what this clock can do is this, uh, this clock can, uh, it's a gettable cl clock with uh, associated rate. Uh, so first you have uh, your um, handle, you allocate them, so here I just uh, put uh, show one, but you allocate the fixed rate and also the gate uh, structure. Then from uh, here, from your uh, device tree, 
you get the information you need. So here we need uh, the, uh, the clock frequency, so the rate, and we also get uh, here the, uh, in the register which bits you have to set uh, to get the clock. So you, uh, with this property, you uh, fill your struct, then you fill your uh, operation and you register uh, your clock and that's all. And with this, you can reuse uh, existing uh, code uh, without having to copy and paste it. Um, so once you have um, written all the code to under your clock, now you have also to uh, define uh, how you will get uh, data uh, about uh, your, your clock. It, it, this is done with uh, the device tree. So now it's the monetary way to declare a clock and to get its resource. Uh, so what we have to do is first we pass uh, the device tree and then uh, with the data from the device tree, uh, we set up uh, the clock, so the resource, uh, which register uh, we need and so on, but also some property. And uh, uh, what we have to do also is to uh, declare uh, the compatible clock uh, and associate it uh, with an intelligent function uh, using uh, this macro. So now we have a generic way to, to, to do it. Uh, let's see uh, an example. So here is some uh, simple example. So we have just a fixed clock, so we uh, I have a clock node uh, with a um, name of it. Here we use uh, one of the base clock, which is a fixed clock. So in this fixed clock, we have to use this clock cell. So every, every, all these uh, strings are um, documented in uh, the, docu the documentation directory of the, of the kernel, so the documentation of the, of the binding then we uh, provide the clock frequency. And if you want to use it, so here it's a clock which uses this clock. We have just uh, a reference here, main PLL, and so the reference is done by this. That's all. Um, from the point of view of the, of the code, how, how it works, um, the association between the uh, compatible string name and uh, the, uh, the setup function is done with clock of declare, so the string name, the uh, function which, is, which will be called. Each, uh, each time it's a device tree, you will have this compatible name, then the kernel will call this function and uh, pass uh, the node to this function, and, and so it is very simple. We get the name of the node, uh, and if we don't have uh, the clock frequency written, but what we, with, what we need is this uh, clock frequency, and we set up the fixed rate with the clock with the frequency uh, we get from it, and that's all. And this name is just a name which used because uh, for um, this macro. What she do is uh, fill uh, a clock wave table, and so we have. We need a name for this, so just a name. Um, and currently, we still need, uh, if you uh, want to use a common clock framework during uh, the boot of your uh, SOC or of your board, you have to call OF clock in it, and this one will automatically uh, pass all the um, clock you have registered with uh, the uh, clock wave declare. So currently you just you, you, you have to put it somewhere during the boot of your system and that all. But um, there is some effort to uh, make it uh, completely uh, general and so as soon as you boot an ARM system it will call uh, the OF clock in it. Um, now a more advanced example. Um, here, it's uh, not a base clock. A basic clock is uh, our own clock. So 
what we, which change is the clock cell that means uh, instead of, a, uh, of having uh, only uh, one part we have two parts and we are going to see how um, so is the name we have registered for the compatible name and then it uh, the core clock cell will mean that uh, when we want to reference this clock we have to pass what is a kind of argument so here it means uh, the clocks will, which will go to the clocks complex uh, will use the first clock of the core clocks uh, family. So uh, with this kind of uh, writing, you can register not one clock, but just a um, family of clock or a range of clock. And then you, will, uh, you can just refer them uh, by number instead of having, uh, for example, 10 clock uh, reference here. Um, so in this case, uh, what we, we do, we um, have a struct uh, which will be registered by with your uh, with our own function. And uh, what uh, as we have seen with the uh, uh, fixed clock here, we have the uh, compatible name uh, string here, and uh, the function which will be called each time we will see the node, and then the node. Uh, and this struct will be passed to our uh, function. And what this function do? It's a little more complex. Uh, so we get the resource uh, from the um, uh, from the node. Uh, I just uh, so uh, show you some part. Because uh, so here we uh, try to register an array of clock. Uh, so that's why you have this kind of uh, uh, function and we register for example uh, what we have uh, is different kind of clock so the uh, first clock we register which will be which is named TCLK will be a fixed rate clock and all this information we can uh, directly get them from the hardware so uh, we have the fixed clock but we don't need the user uh, of the device tree uh, write the, the, the um, the clock, the, the rate, uh, we know the hardware so we can directly find the correct number by ourselves and so uh, it's also usually the idea with device tree you are supposed just to describe what uh, you can't uh, find by yourself uh, dynamically. Um, so uh, this uh, we, are, we have seen how to register a clock, but uh, once the clock is registered, we also need to expose this clock to be able to uh, the other uh, device use it. So this is done with clock add provider. Um, so we pass uh, the node associated uh, with uh, the, the uh, function with uh, the name of the clock. Uh, then we have um, a, call, uh, a callback, so uh, which will be called when you do when from the higher level when we are when you do a clock gate, then it will uh, call a clock source gate, and then will uh, 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 call it with the data you pass on it. Uh, so. As a simple example, so it's the same example, but here from the side of exposing the clock. So, as you see, it's very simple. The click sim simple uh, gate is just uh, g giving back the data you add when you register it. So it's when you uh, do the setup. So this function is called when you re when you register your clock, you register it, and then you expose it. So you expose it with this one and uh, this and you pass to the system um, the function which will be used to uh, decode uh, your um, the data associated uh, to your uh, clock and for more complex uh, data so the same um, function we use for um, the the array of clock so in case of array of clock we uh, don't uh, um, we 
are going to use the parameter uh, we receive. So it will be done, it will be encoded in this uh, uh, variable. Uh, so what we do here, we just have pass a uh, array of data and then we use uh, the uh, from the clock specs we get the index and then we just go to the param with to the um, uh, correct uh, clock with it so how it's done in our case it we have seen that we have registered we register uh, so this usually it, because this function is very uh, global from uh, several SOC, so de uh, depending on the SOC, you can register four or five or six clock. So all this is uh, some data we have, uh, which depend of the kind of the SOC you register. And then, um, it, so you, you have this data, we fill this data, and what we what the ad provider need here is just the array of each uh, clock, and it's uh, the way to giving just a name of a clock and then a parameter knowing which uh, clock to use. And uh, finally, how the uh, driver uh, use the common clock framework. So uh, from the uh, point of view of the device driver, so they are going to use the same kind of functions they, it was used from many years. So usually you uh, get a reference of the clock with a clock gate. Uh, the link between the clock and uh, the device is done uh, either by platform data, but uh, it's more the legacy way, and or by device tree, so it's the preferred method now. You have also the managed version. And um, here, clock gate is just to have a reference of, uh, on a clock, so clock get we just give you a reference, and then usually you activate it uh, by calling clock enable or clock prepare or both, uh, and then you manipulate uh, the clock using the clock API. So if you want to get set the rate, get the rate, uh, and um, something like that. So uh, short example, for example, uh, and for an Ethernet. A driver, it needs a clock, so it's a gateable clock, it's a second gateable clock uh, of the Amada XP. The reference is done by here, or for Watchdog, uh, it's directly, uh, uh, I think in this case, it's just a, a fixed rate clock, so you have a direct reference on it. So the reference is done there. And you just have to do here, you do a uh, dev, uh, we use the manage parts here, but more or less it's just a, a clock gate, and it's automatically get the first clock available uh, given on the device tree. So then you have this reference, usually you uh, store this reference uh, with the instance of your driver, and then uh, during, uh, once you get it, you prepare and enable it to be able to use it later. And for example, for the uh, Ethernet uh, driver, at the point we need to get uh, the uh, rate of the clock. So we just have to do a clock get rate and then use it. So um, in conclusion, uh, this common clock framework is now an efficient way to declare uh, and use the clock. Uh, the amount of, of code uh, to support new clock is very uh, reduced, and uh, uh, in some cases, you maybe some have just to have to write a device tree is you just can be able to use a basic clock, so it can be really re reduced. Uh, it's more and more used, so uh, most of the ARM socks uh, have now finished their migration, but there are also other architectures which start to use it. We find the, some MIPS uh, SOC or even uh, x86 um, uh, board can start to use uh, the common um, clock framework. And we have a recent feature which has been added, 
uh, the debug effects have been improved and now the, you have the JSON uh, style but also a, a, a human readable uh, um, view of the clock with a, a tree, uh, more or less. Um, the reentrancy has been uh, added uh, and we, uh, this one is needed when you want to do uh, the DVFS and uh, as I so, uh, show you, uh, the composite clock which uh, help to um, reuse more the, the, the operation uh, and reduce uh, even more uh, the uh, duplicate code. So, um, have, do you have uh, any question about it? Yes. Uh, so, about the composite clock, is it better to use the composite clock or to use parenting to have a tree of clocks? Okay, so you want to, to know if it's better to use composite clock or to use uh, the, uh, the parent clock? Um, it's... Um, It depends of, the, of uh, what your hardware is at the end. Uh, if uh, you, uh, from the point of view of the hardware, you really have two different clocks, so it's better to uh, show it also in the device tree, so to really have two uh, different uh, kind of, of clock. But if uh, at the end you have only one register to, um, uh, to control your clock, then uh, I think it's better to use a composite clock and just to expose one clock. So from my point of view, it's better to be as close as possible as, as a hardware representation uh, of your board or of your, of your SOC. Um, is it possible to introduce the composite clock in, to be a parent of another clock? So you want to know if it's possible to... Um, uh, For example, uh, Single fixed rate clock, which could be expressed as a composite clock, which could be uh, used as a parent of a divider. Ah, okay, so you want to know if we, if we can combine a composite clock and, and a parent uh, clock? Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, at the end, the composite, uh, composite clock is just exposed as a, a new kind of clock. It's just uh, internally that you choose to. Uh, we have the possibility to use a basic operation, but it's, uh, the, uh, the difference between a composite clock and the uh, with other uh, clock is uh, you have uh, the choice of the function you want to use. But uh, then, uh, from the point of view of how they are connected, uh, it's just uh, another clock as uh, you can uh, also present your own clock. So you can, once you have your composite clock, you can plug it with uh, uh, every uh, other kind of clock. Yes? This clock will framework the power of work and that is covered, so uh, the general can judge if it's better to disable this clock. Uh, if it's efficient or it doesn't matter because certain latency is so high. Mm. Um, so you want to know if we taking account the latency to yeah, disable and enable a clock? Yes, and uh, this information are not part currently of the common clock framework, so uh, we, we can't use it, but um, I think it's still possible to uh, improve the common clock framework and uh, add this kind of information. Uh, currently, it's more for, for the point of view of the power management, you directly call uh, the enable, disable, and something like that, and there is not this kind of information uh, yet, but I think it can be uh, an improvement uh, if there is some uh, some need. It's okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>